Hello and welcome along to my spring needle case video tutorial. Um, in this video today I'll be showing you how to put together a little spring needle case with a jug of flowers on the front. Um, you can use some really straightforward stitches to create a little scrappy fabric collage. Um, it's a really good way to use up small scraps of fabric if you've got little things in fabric stashes that you don't want to throw away. I keep all lots of tiny little pieces so this is a really good way to use all of those pieces up. And I'll go through cutting your fabrics, lining your case, and decorating the outside of those little pieces and we'll look at putting a little jug of flowers on as well, a little spring jug of flowers on the front of your needle case and it's just secured with a ribbon and button as well. So with a few simple stitches and a few small pieces of fabric you can create a nice little needle holder and pin holder for spring. So to make one of these needle cases, you don't need a lot of materials, but I'll go through some of the things that are really handy to have. Um, in terms of fabric that you use, you don't need a lot. It is a really great project for tiny little scraps. You can see how small they are if I just put them on my hand. Um, so you will need some printed cotton scraps um, or linen scraps, things that you might have lying about, just small pieces. I think if you get a clash of colour and patterns, it makes these cases more interesting. Um, so if you've got those to hand, that's great. A little piece of felt that's going to form the um, the little leaf inside of our needle case book. You need some fabric for the inside of the needle case. You need some fabric for the outside of the needle case. Now I tend to start with white linen because I'm going to put some printed cottons on it and make it really cheerful. Um, if you've got some little cut out flowers, these can be from vintage linens or they can be from printed cottons. A little piece of ribbon and a button for closing your case. Some embroidery threads. I've picked some particularly spring colours to go with some of the printed cottons. Um, just some white polyester machine thread is always really handy to have. And then some more felt or some bump to put inside to actually line your case with. And this will just make it a little bit thicker and a little bit more substantial when you're putting all those pins and needles in. I do have these kits available on Etsy if you'd just like to buy one kit and have everything in it that you need materials wise. Uh, you'll get all of these things and needles and threads. You'll get cut flowers, you get a button and ribbon. Um, you'll also get a little piece of bondo web, which I'll talk about later on in the video, uh, which will help you secure your little floral jug onto the linen. Um, and you'll also get a small pack of instructions, which will be a sort of abridged version of everything that I cover um, in this video. Uh, what I would mention actually, is that if you do buy these on Etsy, you might not get these exact colours and patterns um, but you will get a good enough selection to have um, a bit of a, a choice, a bit of a rummage if you're making your needle case with this kit. So the patterns and the colours might change, but you'll get the, the um, you'll get all of the contents so you can make a needle case following this video. So those are the materials you need. In terms of equipment, it's really simple. You need your needle. Can't lay that one down because you won't see it. Fabric scissors, pins. Um, a pencil is handy um, for later on because I will show you how to use um, bonder web so if you do have any bonder web at home which is just an, a paper backed iron on glue that's really handy for securing the jug on the front of your needle case if you were to buy the kit you get a little piece of bonder web with the kit you get a piece bigger than this i promise this is just because i'm using a tiny scrap because it's a tiny needle case but you'll get a piece bigger than that in the kit um, and just to show you my threads again because i know they were wrapped up a little bit small on the last frame um it's really handy just to have some white machine cotton nearby and these are the six stranded embroidery threads that I had laid out before. So you can see there on the cards, you can see the colours a little better and they're really springy colours. Um, really nice for the season and they'll go nicely on the printed cottons that I've chosen. So they're six stranded. You get a metre of each of those in the kit and they split as well. So you get loads and loads of um, metres of sewing out of a metre of six stranded cotton. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make the body of our needle case. Um, and this, so we're going to make a sandwich, if you like, and then we're going to cut it down to size. Now, your needle case can be any size you want. These ones, this one's probably only like a couple of inches um, tall, and about maybe it's two and a half inches long. Both of them sit in the palm of my hand, so they are nice little sizes to work on. I guess the size of your needle case would depend on the size of the little fabric scraps that you're going to decorate it with and what you have to hand. Um, but a good way of checking how big it'll be, if you've got little scraps of fabric around you, is just to fold them in half, and then that gives you an idea of how big your finished needle case will be. This one's a little bit deep for me at the moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my outside fabric down first. So this white linen is gonna be on the outside of my needle case. It's gonna be this part. Then I'm gonna put this curtain bump over the top, which is just a nice filler, stabilizer. You can use felt, or if you've got like a thick 
um, woolen fabric perhaps that would do I'm going to pop that in there I'm going to make sure it covers this little trim here because I really like this as a little feature on the needle case and then I'm just going to put my lining fabric over the top now you can see I've cut mine down to different sizes already so I need to make those all the same size now so I'm going to make that little sandwich so I've got the lining on the inside the bump and then the outer part of the fabric I've made a little sandwich I'm going to pin this together and then cut around the edge to make sure that all of my bits of fabric are the same size. And it's really important to pin because you'd be surprised at how much fabric can move once you pick it up and start to snip it. Okay, so everything's pinned in place and once it was pinned, I've just cut around the edge of those fabric fabrics that were all pinned together, just trimmed the excess off. And now what I've actually got is a little sandwich. So I've got my linen lining, I've got the bump in the middle, and I've got the inside lining there. Um, now, when I fold that, just carefully, because it's got pins in it, you can see now, if I take this middle ones out, that the size of my needle case is gonna be roughly, sort of, yay big. So that's kind of a nice little size now for a needle case. At this point, um, before we, we, we are gonna take this little bit of lining off before we decorate the front, but just at this point, while you've still got the pins in, and you've got that little sandwich there. It's a good idea if you're gonna put a little felt leaf inside of your book, just to make sure that you've got a piece of felt that is cut to just a little bit less than the size of your needle case. Um, now, if you're struggling to get a straight line, it's sometimes easier to fold in half and snip. As I mentioned earlier, if you've got a fabric pen and you want to draw straight lines on this, then you can also draw out your rectangle and cut it along drawn lines instead of doing it freehand. But we can just pop that little piece in there and then you can see that sits within the body of the needle case. It doesn't overlap, so when I close the needle case, I fold it in half carefully because it's still got pins in it. Now I've got something that's about this size, but it's gonna have a little felt leaf in the middle as well. So once you've got that cut, you can pop that felt to one side for now. We don't need that until um, sort of towards the end um, and I'm now going to take these pins out because we're going to decorate the front but what we don't want to do is decorate the front and when we sew it we don't want all those stitches to come through to the lining we want to keep the lining um, free of any stitches you want to keep all of the the wrong side of the stitch and hidden away in the lining and the inside of the needle case so we're just going to put the lining to one side now as well so now you can turn this over so we're working now on the front of the needle case what we'll see when it's folded up and this is where we get to play around with some fabric scraps. I'm just going to lay these ones out as well so you can see these examples of the other ones that I've done. So the idea here is just to use the smallest of scraps. I keep a little box on my desk full of tiny little scraps. Um, I don't throw anything away. And it's really nice because if you want to come home at the weekend and just sort of do some little projects, I can just grab this box, bring it home. And I know I've got lots of little bits of fabric in which are great for pattern and colour and bits of collage. So you can see, again, they're really small scraps. Some of them just fit in the palm of my hand. So it's worth keeping the tiniest of things because they're great for little projects like this. And this is the fun part because now what you get to do is just start snipping and layering and just deciding where you're going to put things. Um, I always think it's quite nice if we're going to do this jug floral to have a piece that does go along the bottom of the um, body of the needle case, even if it's only part way along, because then we can make it look like a jug is sitting on a table when we get to putting the jug of flowers on later. So now you just get to play around with fabrics, snip away at them and lay them out and decide just where everything is going to go. So some pieces can be larger than others. Do keep a little scrap as well for um, the jug. I'm going to keep the blue, I think, for the jug for mine. I've got a little bit of Kath Kidston fabric here, which I think I'll just patch up there on the side. And I'm just going to snip them to size. They are quite rough and ready, these needle cases, but that's why I quite like them, because the more you use them, the softer they become. Um, so I'm just going to do a few little patches like this. And what we need to do now is pin those in place. So again, just pop some pins into those little scraps and make sure it goes right through to the bump to the other side. Oops, I've got two pins in there. So just make sure everything is pinned down nice and flat. Give this an iron if you want once you've got everything pinned down. And then it stays nice and flat for the next stage. So 
I'm just going to pop some pins in there to keep those in place. And that's going to be my little patchwork background. Before we saw these pieces in place, which I'll go through in just a moment, we're going to start looking at the next bit, which is placing the jug. So before any of these are stitched down, it's a good idea just to carefully, if it's got pins in it, fold it over so you can now see how these little patches start to frame the front of your needle case. And then you can decide where you might put a jug. Now you can just cut a jug shape out of um, any, any printed fabric. I quite often use friction pens, um, which I find a little bit better than dissolvable pens because you can draw on um, as a, just a, you would with a normal ballpoint pen, if you can see there. And then with a warm iron, you can just iron those marks away. So if you wanted to draw a little jug shape, you know it's gonna have to be about yay big. You can give yourself little guidelines almost and just draw a really simple milk jug. Don't worry about the handle. It's too fiddly to cut out. You can just stitch that in later. So you could draw a milk, a milk jug shape and you could cut it straight out of fabric. You might get little frayed edges this way, um, but you can, you can stitch it all in place with the white machine thread, which I'll mention in the next step. The other option is if you have a little bit of bond web, so a little bit of, it's like a paper backed glue if you're not familiar with it. Um, as I said, that you will get a little piece in the kits if you do order those. Uh, if you do have a little bit of bond web, it's a nicer way um, to put these little jugs on because the bonder web just seals the edges so you don't get any frayed edges and it really bonds it down onto the fabric. So I'm going to go through that step now. But you can see there that you could use a friction pen to create that jug shape, cut it out and place it on and that could be pinned in place. If you want to use bonder web, as I mentioned before, I've got a really small scrap here. It is just a paper, it's a glue, a paper backed iron on glue is how I can describe it. So one side is slightly textured and a bit shiny, that's your glue side. The other side is paper and you can draw on that. So you can draw your jug shape on that. Now you'll notice that mine have got leaves on that I've rubbed out. It's because again, I keep all the little scraps. So this was used for something else initially. Uh, didn't end up being ironed onto the fabric. So I've just kept it because small scraps like this are perfect for small projects like this. So if you're gonna use Bonder Web on the paper side, draw your jug shape. Remember that with Bonder Web, once you've ironed this onto fabric, it's gonna flip over to iron onto here. So whichever way you draw your jug needs to be inverse on Bonder Web. So if I want my jug pointing this way, I'm gonna draw it with the, the sort of lip facing this way on the Bonder Web. And it's handy just to put it next to your needle case so you can get an idea of scale. So I'm just gonna draw that shape out. Sometimes the more naive they are as well, the better. They'll just look quite nice if they're a little bit higgledy-piggledy. So I've got my iron switched on next to me now and I've just got this little scrap of printed grey cotton, which I'm gonna use for the jug that I've done. So what you need to do is you need to turn your fabric over so that you're ironing your jug bond web shape onto the wrong side of your printed cotton. So I'm gonna place that down, place the jug over it, and then just a few seconds with a warm iron, We'll get that steamed and pressed into place. And then all you need to do, that's now bonded on to the fabric, is you cut out your jug shape. Pop that to one side. So we've got a little jug shape. Now, because the bonder web goes right to the edges, it's almost like having a glue right to the edges so they won't fray. All you need to do now is just carefully peel that paper backing off. Don't have any nails at the moment, so that's gonna be tricky. And then you can see if you peel that paper backing off, the other side, if I can bring this close at the camera, the wrong side of your fabric now is nice and shiny and flat with glue. So what you need to do is make sure you turn that over so the glue side is facing down. And then when you're ready, you could bond that into place on your needle case. So that's how to use the bond web jug. And to bond that in place, you just press that with an iron for a few seconds. What I'm gonna do at the moment though is just pop that to one side because before I do that, I think what I'd like to do is make sure that these little patches are all sewn down. But it is handy to kind of get that jug shape ready so you can just see where you might place it on your needle case before you start to sew these patches into place. So that's making the jug just by drawing and cutting it out or by drawing it onto bonder web and ironing it and then cutting it out uh, once it's been bonded onto fabric. So 
So once we've got that jug sorted and we know where it's going to go, we're going to go back to this bit and we need to, uh, now we need to sew these bits down so that when we take the pins out, they don't all flap and fall all over the place. And to do that, we're going to use a really simple stab stitch. So to talk you through that stab stitch, we're just going to thread up our needle with the machine cotton. So nice and thin. The idea is that we don't see this stitch at all. It gets everything in place and then we can get rid of the pins when we embroider later so that we don't get wrapped around pins and, and stick yourself in the fingers with pins as you're trying to embroider later on as well. So thread your needle with a little bit of the white machine thread and then it's too thin to tie a knot in and then pull through because this would just pull straight through your needle case. So what I do is turn your needle case over, I'll try and stay close to the camera here and just do a couple of stitches in the same spot. And that will anchor your thread into your material so that when you push it through to the right side, you can pull on your thread and it won't come out. You've anchored it into your fabric. And stab stitch is really straightforward. It's just a tacking stitch, really. As I say, it gets everything in place and it stops things from moving about. Now, you can just do it on the patch pieces if you want. But what I would recommend you do, actually, is to work along your whole needle case. And then it will just stitch all of the um, bump to the, the lining of your case as well. So it just keeps everything together in that little sandwich so nothing can move and all of the pieces line up still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in close to where I came out so that I leave behind the tiniest pin prick of a stitch and I'm going to move about an inch along and come up again. And I'm just going to go back in close to where I came out from. So you just leave little tiny pin pricks and actually sometimes it creates quite a nice texture in your needle case. Just little pin prick stitches. Holds everything together. Come up, it might be easier to show you on the right here. Come up about an inch away and put your needle close to where you came out from. And that will keep everything together. You can see already you get wrapped around pins. So it's really nice that you can get rid of those pins after doing the stab stitch. And then when you come to do embroidery, um, you, you won't get your lovely embroidery threads tangled in all the pins because that can really slow you down. It can be a bit frustrating. So I'm going to do this now along the whole needle case. You might want to pause the video here so you can do yours too. And I'm just going to go along, down, along, down, along, down. Just do a few little lines so that I can take the pins out and this will hold together. Okay, so stab stitching's done. Only takes a few minutes, but I think it's a really worthwhile thing to do because you can get rid of all of the pins. You can really see you work nice and flat. Um, you can also see a little bit of texture from the stab stitch as well, which I think is quite nice because it gives these needle cases a little quilted effect. If I turn it over, you can see how uh, long the stitches are. And when you finish your stitch off, just do the same thing as we did when you started. Just do a couple of stitches in the same spot and that should anchor your thread into your fabric. You might want to give it a bit of a press at this point. You've got the iron nearby. What you can do now is um, you can either pin on your little jug or if you've used the bond web, you can iron it on. So I'm just going to fold this over again because I just want to double check I'm putting it in the right sort of place. I think that's going to be fine there for me. So this side has got the bond web on. So I'm going to unfold it and press that jug in place. And if you're using the one without bond web on, if you've just cut it out of fabric, just pin that in place. And you can just run a little stitch around the edge, but I will go over back stitching the jugs in a short while. But if you find that the pin's bothering you, you can just, similar to the stab stitch, just do a few little stitches just to hold that in place with the white thread and that'll keep the jug in place as well. So you can see it's really building up now, this cover. So now we've got the jug on what looks like a little tablecloth um, and we also need to now think about putting some little flowers in there as well. And you can see with these ones, they're both a mixture of a stitched stem um, with a couple of little French knots and a decoupage floral, which is from cut out from some vintage linen. So I've got a couple here that I'm going to have a look at. You'll find as you work that you might find that some of them are just far too big, but then sometimes if the scale's a bit funny, that kind of makes them quite nice as well. I actually quite like that really big one there, so I might keep that and do a couple of little decoupage florals there. Um, and I'll put those onto my needle case. So I'm going to pin those in place. So again, just open the case up. Once you've checked that it's where you want it to be, just put a couple of pins through them. Um, you don't have to cut flowers out of vintage linens. You can also cut them out of printed cottons as well if you want to. 
Um, or you don't have to even cut flowers out. You can just source them yourself coming out of the jug. But this is just how I do it because I have these little linen scraps um, lying around. Now that the flowers are pinned in place, I'm going to stitch them in place again, just similar to what we did before with the stab stitch again with the white machine thread. And I'm just going to make sure that they're sewn into place. And you can see with these ones, I've just sewn through the petals in a few places around the flower. So actually, you can still see there's a little bit of texture. These do come off the surface a little bit. But again, the more you use your needle case and the more these little edges fray, the more texture you get to your case. So again, you don't need to tie a knot in the end. It'll just pull through. So just flip this over and do a couple of little stitches in the same spot on the back of your needle case. And then push it through to the front. And what I usually do is I just go through each petal with a sab stitch. And that way the white thread disappears into the embroidery thread. You see, just pull it through there. It disappears in, but it anchors that cut flower on your needle case. So just quickly around every petal on both flowers and then you can take the pins out and then you've got your flowers anchored onto your needle case as well. So that's the flowers stitched down, that's everything there and anchored into place now. We get to do the fun bit which is to use the nice embroidery threads to um, sew into the front of the needle case and you can see with some of these examples here um, it's just a little bit of back stitch or split stitch I've done a little couple of French knots there for, to suggest some flowers. Um, and you can see just a little bit of overstitching here, if I can bring these close to the camera. So where you've got these raw edges of your patchwork, you can just do some overstitching and that anchors everything nicely in place. I do think that sometimes the simplest of stitches can be the most effective. So with a little bit of back stitch, a little bit of overstitching, you can create some really nice effects. You can see there, I've used contrasting colours just to go down the patchwork so it really stands out quite deliberately and then just to go around the jug with some back stitch to highlight that as well now if you're using six stranded cotton if you they, they will be in the kits uh, but if you have six stranded cotton at home for something on this size on this scale i think i would recommend that you probably just use um, two strands really because six strands would be too thick you can see that that's quite thick on the needle case so take a piece off I wouldn't ever take anything off that's longer from kind of your arm to your elbow, otherwise you're likely to get into knots when you start sewing. Um, and these split into six strands. So if I can just splay them out amongst my fingers there. Now, it's tempting when you split these to pull like that, but then you're gonna get this twist here and you tend to get a knot. So the best thing to do with six stranded cotton is to split it amongst your fingers, just spread it out a little bit, and then take one strand at a time and just pull straight up and lay it down on your work and then take another strand. So how many strands you want to work with, but just pull them straight out and then you won't get knots because that's really frustrating when you're trying to sew and then you spend more time untangling knots than actually sewing. Then you just put your two strands back together and you're ready to start sewing. So I'm gonna start by demonstrating some back stitch on the jug. Now you can tie a knot on these if you want. I do tend not to because I always think that they kind of create little lumps. So it's just nice to sew as you have, as we've done before with the machine embroidery thread to just sew a couple of stitches into the back of your work. And that just keeps it nice and flat and anchors um, the thread in nicely. So bring your needle up through the jug. Don't let the stitches get too big on something this size because then it can look a bit messy and it can catch a bit and be a bit loopy. So you're going to do one stitch, the back stitch, and then come up just a short distance away from the end of your last stitch and go back into the end of your last stitch. That's where it gets its name from. So you come up a short distance away from your last stitch and then you go back into the end of your last stitch. And what you get there is a solid unbroken line so it's good for the line that goes around the jug because <clears throat> it helps to make it stand out a bit got a little loop there so you come up short distance away make sure i'm still on the camera there and back into your last stitch and you get your solid line 
That's the jug all stitched in there with a little handle. What I'm going to do now is some split stitch for the stems. And I've just, just so you can see where I'm going to stitch, I've drawn them in with my friction pen, which I'll iron out and that'll disappear later. So you can see there the jug building up with a little handle with back stitch. Um, I've got two strands now of the green and I've just brought them through the base of the first stem. So it's split stitch is really easy. You just do a single stitch to start off with. And then you're gonna bring your needle halfway up through that last stitch. So you're gonna actually split the stitch that you've just done. Bring your needle up again, and then push your needle back down about a stitch distance away. And again, bring your needle back up. Instead of bringing it up a distance away, bring it up about halfway through the last stitch. So if you imagine that you're poking your needle up halfway through the length of the last stitch. And then, one more, just a few stitches with these. You can see they are really small scale. So I'm gonna split that stitch and sew it up to that flower head. And then I'm gonna go back down this stem here and do the same thing again. So one little stitch and then it's split with the needle. If you're using two strands, it's not too hard to, to split it. It might look a little bit grey underneath if you're using the friction pens, but once they iron out, they disappear completely. And then you can really see your stitched line. Now that the jug of flowers stitched in place, we can start thinking about decorating some of this patchwork. So well, the patchwork's all stab stitched in place from earlier, but you can see you still have these little sort of flaps where the little edges haven't been secured down properly. So now's the chance with your different coloured threads to go along with just a little bit of over stitching and create that patchwork effect. And that means that everything's stitched on on the inside because it's a stab stitch, but then the edges will be stitched down properly where you've just done a little bit of over stitching along the edges of those patchwork. So I'm gonna start with two strands of yellow um, and I'm just gonna go along this pink here. So I won't video all of it because you will want to be getting on and not just watching me sew lots of little stitches, but just to quickly show you, I just come out on the white and then go in on the pink. I'm just gonna create lots of little vertical lines on the patchwork. So vertical and horizontal to go around your patchwork. Um, and don't worry, you know, don't get them too, make sure they're not too big, but don't worry if they're a little bit higgledy-piggledy because I think this really is a little scrappy needle case project and actually it's naivety is the sort of, the really endearing thing about them, makes them look really nice. So you can see how quick it is to do, but it just gives you that lovely patchwork effect along the edge. You can see there. So I'm going to do that now along all of these little edges. Not the edges that go around the edge of the needle case though. Don't worry about doing these bits here because we'll sew all of this together in the next step. So just do the patchwork edges on the inside. So not, not nothing around the edge just yet. Just these inside edges that are hanging a little bit loose. Those patches are all stitched in now. So you can see I've just made, I've deliberately used contrasting colours. So I've got some yellow here, some pink around the blue, and I've got yellow um, around these coral coloured piece here. Uh, what I thought I would do, just because I've got quite a lot of white here, is just do a couple of little French knots, because I can't resist a French knot. Um, and I'll show you how we do those now. Um, if you do get the kit to go with this, you do get like a little printed stitched guide in the back of the abridged instructions. So if you find it difficult to follow from a video, um, you do get sort of a little diagram and an explanation as well on how to do French knots. But they are just a lovely way to add some texture, which you've already done with all of the stitching so far. But French knots just raise the surface a little bit. So I'm just gonna put three in pink, two strands of pink, just around the edge of this flower here. So once you've anchored your thread in your fabric, you need to bring your needle up through your fabric. And let me just zoom in ever so slightly here. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to see because it can be a little bit fiddly while you're just getting used to using them. So I've brought the um, thread up through the fabric. Now with my free hand, I'm just gonna hold the thread about an inch away from where it's come out from the fabric. And then with the needle hand between the, my fingers and the um, fabric, I'm going to wrap the thread around the needle three times. And just hold it there, not too tightly, you should still be able to move your needle around. You're gonna slide your needle back while you're still holding the, the thread, and you're just gonna pop that needle in close to where you came out. 
and you're gonna still hold on to this piece of thread, not too tightly, but just keep that there so that it doesn't unravel around the needle and just pull that needle through. And when you let go, you should have a little French knot. And do another one. So you bring your needle up through the fabric. With your free hand, you grab that thread and then in the space between your fingers and the fabric, you wrap the thread around the needle three times. Slide your needle back and just pop it back into the fabric close to where your needle originally came out from. And then still holding this piece of thread in your other hand, pull your needle, whoops, pull your needle through the fabric. And just as it goes to go through, let go and you get another little French knot. So I'm going to do a third one because I always think that everything looks really nice in groups of three. So just grab the thread, wrap it three times, slide your needle back and push that needle in close to where you came out from, holding this piece of thread while you pull that needle through. And then you've got three little French knots on either side of your flower, which just decorates it. So I'm just gonna pass the needle a couple of times through the bump again at the back, which will anchor it in place. And then that, for me, that's my decoration done. Now you can at this point as well, add some text if you want to. Um, you'll notice on my samples, I've actually sent linen through my typewriter and I've got bloom on both of these. Now you can sew that in by hand if you wanted to, if you wanted to actually stitch the words bloom onto your needle case. Um, or if you've got alphabet stamps and an ink pad, you could actually stamp them onto a little strip of linen and then sew that down here. Um, or if like me, you like sticking linen in typewriters, you can try typewrite, putting it on as a, a sort of a typewriter piece. Um, I wouldn't recommend any sort of paper text on there. I know sometimes in my work, I quite often put paper on top of fabric, but that's for things that tend to go in frames. And because this is, you know, this will be moved quite a lot and used quite a lot, I wouldn't really recommend putting any paper text on here because I think eventually it would just uh, crumble and tear off. So there's a few options there if you wanted to put um, the word bloom or some text on your needle case as well. Now let's get the button on and the ribbon in place. So they need to roughly be at either end of the needle case, uh, roughly in line with each other. So your button, you can stitch straight on, um, about maybe half a centimetre in from the edge, because this edge will be stitched eventually. So just bring it in a little bit from the edge, don't let it get too close. If you ever need to trim these as you go along or just straighten them up, you don't want to have your button so close to the edge that there's a risk of it fraying and falling off. So you can sew your button along the right hand edge so that will be on the front of your needle case and then we're going to on the other side we're going to stitch the ribbon in line with the button um, onto the left hand side of the needle case so that'll be the back of the needle case and i've just got two strands of my blue um, cotton again i'm going to anchor that into the back of the fabric and sew this button on and then to sew the ribbon on it's just a few again a few stitches just to keep everything in place There's my dog Bog, and that's someone who's no doubt only walking down the street. He likes to have a woof. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of little cross stitches for the button. So again, I'm just st staying away from the edge of the fabric, just in case I need to trim it, and I will definitely be stitching that soon as well, so not too close to the edge. I'm just going to go over that a couple of times, just so it's a little bit more stable. And I do quite like to use contrasting threads as well because I think it just sort of adds to the cheeriness of these little needle cases. So that's the button in place. Just anchor that in the back. And you can see how busy the back's becoming now with all of the sewing. So that's why one of the reasons why we didn't um, put the lining on straight away. We do all the sewing through the bump. Now, you can pin the ribbon in place if that helps you probably don't need as much as this but once you've got it stitched into place you can cut it down to the size that you want and I'm just going to see that needs to go about there you can pop a little pin in if it helps you don't let that get too close to the edge because again if your ribbon frays it could pull out so put a couple of centimeters of ribbon inside of your needle case just pop a little pin in that and then just a few little stitches. You can use the blue if you want to see it on the other side, or you can use your white um, machine thread again. And that is just 
really what we want with this one is it just needs to be anchored in place. So I use back stitch, but then I tend to go over and over the same spot just to really reinforce the ribbon because that's the thing that's going to have the little bit of um, tension on it when you're constantly wrapping it around the button. So I am just, don't, I'm not worrying too much about how it looks. It's all going to be inside and hidden away. I'm more concerned that it's nice and sturdy for the tension that's going to go on this ribbon when we're closing the needle case later on. So a few stitches in the same spot just to anchor it in place. It's freeing a bit so I'll give that a trim. Okay, so now we've got the ribbon in place and the button in place. Okay, almost done. What we need to do now, now we've got the front all sorted, the button and the ribbon in place, is flip it over. And we're going to hide all of this sewing with the lining, which we put to one side earlier on. So just popping that over your needle case and making sure it's all lined up nicely. You grab your pins again and you can put some pins in it to keep it all in place. Keep those edges lined up. So we've got that sandwich again. So we've got the outer part of the needle case, the right side. We've got the bump lining which is all stitched to the outside now, so that won't move, but now we need to get the inner lining in, and we don't want that to shuffle about as we're sewing it, so just half a dozen pins to keep that in place. And you could, I just use a quick whip stitch for the edge of these because I think it's the rough and readiness of these needle cases that I really like, which I've mentioned before. Um, you can use your, um, your six-stranded cotton if you want to. If you want to have a contrasting thread, you could use a few different coloured threads. You can get really creative with these and really make them your own. Um, with these ones that I did, I just used white, but you can see by using the white, you can't really see the stitching, but what you do get is that nice kind of quilted effect along the edge, so you just get that lovely texture, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, but yeah, you could you could use your colourful ones, and I shall show you how I do it. It's just a really quick over stitch. And with this one, now that it's pinned, we're going to go all the way around the needle case. What we have to make sure is that we just be careful when we stitch the ribbon, just sort of dance around that a little bit, a couple of stitches either side, um, and that'll help to anchor it. If you've pinned it and you turn it over and you find that you can see a little bit of your lining fabric in there, just before you start sewing, just go along and have a little trim, just neaten it off a bit. You can always fold this in half again and see what it looks like when it's folded. Um, in case you want to add any more detail to it before you do your, your final bit of sewing. I've got a bit of an overlap there. I'm just going to snip some of this away. You might want to give it a quick press. But I do think the more you use these, the nicer they become because they become really kind of softened and tactile from regular use. Just be careful with all the pins in though because it can get pretty sharp. So I've got my th needle threaded with just my machine cotton again. Try and hide this time, try and hide your start of your stitching inside in the bump. So just pull that back a little bit and just do your couple of stitches in the same spot, but do them in the bump inside, in the lining inside of your needle case. Because now we want to keep all of the bits of sewing inside. We don't want to see any of that in the, the, the red polka dot lining here. So just going to trim off that little bit there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, oops, once I've untangled myself, is I'm just going to go over. So I'm just coming through the needle case and I'm just going from back to front. Just small stitches and just over stitch all the way around. So from back to front. If you know how to do blanket stitch, that's another one that you can do to edge this, which is also quite nice. I'm just using whip stitch, just stitching straight over the edge. And I will go all around the needle case with that. And that just finishes it all off. So that's the edge all stitched in now. When I finish, I'm just going to do the same thing as I did when I started. And I'm going to just hide the sewing inside here. So I'm just pushing the needle in between those layers a few times, a few little stitches on the same spot. So that when I snip it, you don't see the end of the thread. Put that out of the way. There'll be a couple of little threads that you can snip as you've gone around because things do fray a little. Make sure you take all of your pins out. So put your felt back in the middle again that we had before. It's framed nicely now by all of that polka dot and stitch. 
Um, and you need your pins again. And what you're going to do is just very gently fold your case in half. And we're just going to open it back up again. Oops. Open it back up again, but hold the felt in place. And so what I usually do is just, once I've got that sort of nice crease there that I can see, so I know where halfway is, I open it up gently again and just put pins over that centre line. So I'm just taking two strands of my six stranded cotton and this time I'm going to anchor it just under here in the lining fabric and I'm not going to go through to the other side so I'm going to keep this free of all back stitch. You could stitch all the way through all the layers if you wanted to but what I find is the back of back stitch, the wrong side of back stitch if you like, um, is it's it's not as tidy. Um, so it's nice when you do this if you just push your needle through a couple of layers but make sure you're not pushing your needle all the way through to the other side. So you're just gonna, you can sort of feel your way through. If you've got your hand on the side, you can feel that it's not going through. So just a back stitch. So into the last stitch and back out again. And we're gonna do that all the way along this seam. If you wanted to use um, a marker or a pencil to draw a line so you get a nice straight line, you can do. Um, but I just do this by sight, usually using the fold line in between the pins. And it's a back stitch all the way to the end. If you did want to stitch all the way through, you kind of create like a, a spine effect, I suppose, on, on this side here. Um, you might want to just use a running stitch, but make it quite small so that it, it's a bit stronger um, and holds all the layers together. Because there will be a little bit of tension on this bit of felt where you're um, opening and closing the book and, and taking pins in and out of it. So I wouldn't make stitches too big because you want to keep everything nice and secure in place. When you get to the end of this bit of felt, what we're going to do is anchor off in the same way we started. So push your needle through the felt to the red side. I'm just going to turn that over so I can try and show you a little bit better. And then you're just going to do a couple of stitches in the same spot. Just pass your needle through a few times, just through the red. So it's hidden away. Snip that thread off and then you can pull. So I've left a bit there. Trim that later. Pull your pins out and then you've got your book ready to go. If you wanted to now, you can give it a little press. I've got my iron just here. And also at this point as well, if you wanted to trim down your ribbon, if that's just far too long, you can do. So you just need a little piece like that. And there we go. That is your scrappy spring needle case all done and ready for some pins and some needles inside so i hope you've enjoyed watching i hope you found the video useful um and it's uh, fairly straightforward to follow um as i said before there are kits available on etsy and the link is in the comments um in the description here on youtube and if you go on Etsy and find the kit, the link is also on that description back to YouTube as well. And if you buy a kit, you get the YouTube link to this video. So you can pause it and use it for reference and stop and start it as and when you need to. But there we go. Happy spring crafting. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I do appreciate any feedback. So if you want to leave me a comment, that's always really helpful. And uh, happy sewing.